Hello everyone, my name is Giorgia Cantizani and I'm a PhD student at Telecom Paris under the supervision of Professor Slim Sid and Guy Richard. The work I'm going to present you today is the work I did during my internship at the Home Experience Lab at InterDigital in Rennes with Alexei Ozerov. Specifically, we address the problem of music source separation, which aims at isolating individual sound sources in the audio recording of a musical piece. Most state-of-the-art source separation systems are nowadays based on deep neural networks trained in a fully supervised fashion. Those models have proven to be extremely powerful, but only when the training data is enough for learning the massive amount of parameters they have. Moreover, it is still hard for them to generalize to unseen test data with significant timbral variation compared to training, and high-quality music source separation remains still an open problem for most instruments and music genres. To improve a source separation system performance, one can inform it with additional knowledge about the test data. For instance, the score, the lyrics, visual cues, and many others. Among those, one of the most underrated but powerful modalities is the user feedback, which may leverage significant human expertise. In this last case, we talk about user-guided music source separation. It is the case, for instance, of a sound engineer who can provide many priors about a mix of interest and use them to adapt and correct the separation system. Using the user feedback to inform a source separation system was widely explored for what it concerns non-negative matrix factorization or tensor factorization based systems, while it is less common for deep learning based systems. The main reason lies in the fact that deep learning based system for music source separation is learned using both the side information and the audio material to be separated. Therefore, the side information is needed during training, but it's hard to find suitable datasets where you have both the audio material and the side information, which are large enough to learn a deep learning model from scratch. Instead, one may want, for example, to choose a powerful deep model, which was trained in a fully supervised fashion for the music source separation task, and adapt it to a specific mixture using the additional information which is available only at test time. We therefore investigated whether it is possible to inform a source separation model based on deep learning using the time activation of the sources provided by the user to fine tune it to one specific test mixture. We underlined that the adaptation is one shot as it acts on the target song instance only and not on a new dataset as most fine tuning strategies do. Usually, in supervised training of a source separation model in the time domain, the difference between the estimated and the ground root sources is used to update the model parameters. In our case, during adaptation, we do not have access to the isolated sources anymore, but only to the binary temporal activation. So to adapt the model weights to the test mixture, we introduce a new loss function that minimizes the energy of the silent sources while at the same time forces the perfect reconstruction of the mixture thanks to the information provided by the binary temporal activations. For the experiments, we use the MuseDB dataset, which consists of full-length music tracks and corresponding isolated stems for the drums, bass, vocals, and others. As its name suggests, the other stems contains all other sources in the mix that are not the drums, the bass, or the vocals. We used only the first 10 track of the test set and their binary temporal activation computed on the ground root sources using a standard envelope following technique. The source separation model we choose for our experiments is the popular ContestNet, adapted for music source separation by the Fosse. However, we underline that the proposed approach is general and can be applied to other types of audio sources and deep learning architecture. When adapting a deep learning model for a new task, fine-tuning of the network parameters is often useless. For example, the first layers extract some general features that might be also useful for the new task, which in our case is not even a new task but only a specific instance of the test set. Moreover, the data on which to perform the adaptation is minimal, just one mixture. 
Thus, we investigated different fine-tuning strategies, where we started fine-tuning from different blocks of ContestNet. For instance, if you see experiment PL2D, it means that the network is fine-tuned starting from the second block to the last one, using the proposed loss. In the table, one can see the SDR for different fine-tuning strategies and instruments in the dataset. B0 stands for the non-adapted ContestNet. So it is necessary to fine-tune at least from the third block to improve the baseline B0 significantly. However, fine-tuning for a more profound block corresponds to millions of more parameters to fine-tune. In figure, one can see uh, the same results compared with additional baselines. Blue bars cor corresponds to models fine-tuned with the proposed loss, while orange ones correspond to models fine-tuned using the mixed reconstruction loss only. The red line represents the B0 baseline. So the deeper we fine-tune, the higher the improvement over the corresponding baseline, showing that the activations play an active role in the adaptation, which cannot be achieved easily in a completely unsupervised fashion. The improvement is evident especially for the category other, for which the non-adapted model was struggling the most. As we said before, this category does not represent a specific instrument and therefore present much higher variability than the other classes. To conclude, our results are promising and show that state-of-the-art source separation models may be significantly improved via adaptation to the specific test mixture using the side information available only at test time. The improvement is particularly remarkable for instruments underrepresented in the training data, for which an unadapt model struggles to find a common representation. We underline that the proposed approach is general and can be applied to other old sources or deep model architectures. The results show that we need at least a weak guiding signal in a semi-supervised setting for improving the separation quality, and that a naturally unsupervised adaptation is not enough. The main drawback is that there is no improvement over the non-adapt model if the sources are continuously activated. Online, you can find additional resources, such as the code used for the experiments and a demo. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon at the poster session.